In the name of the Father. True God. Creator of heaven and earth. In the name of the Son. True God and true man. Who came into this world to save us. In the name of the Holy Spirit. True God who brings us to faith and gives us life. Amen. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. Almighty God, King of heaven and earth, we tremble when we think of standing before you. Indeed, on our own, we cannot come into your presence. Our sin separates us from you and makes us worthy only of condemnation. But you are a king of mercy, and you sent your son Jesus into our world. He took on our form and bore our sin to become our savior. By his grace, Jesus opened the kingdom of heaven to us. Therefore, for his sake, People of God, I bring you good tidings of great joy. The King of glory, the Lord Almighty, has come to defeat your enemies of sin, death, and the devil. He has come to give you life, life with God forever and ever. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the King, and by his authority, I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will tell of the power of your awesome deeds, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyful may be seated.
The theme of our service here this evening is called Unwrapped from Swaddling Clothes. When we think about Christmas presents that we get, obviously most of them are wrapped. And in order to know, of course, what the gift is actually all about, you first got to unwrap it, right? You got to tear off the bow, tear off the paper, and then you can see what you actually got. Well, when God gave his son, Jesus, as a gift to the world, he kind of, in a sense, wrapped him as well. He wrapped him in swaddling clothes. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But what we have to do then, just like with any other present, if we want to know what the gift really is all about, we need to unwrap. We need to unwrap. So in a kind of a way, we're going to unwrap a present here tonight. We're going to unwrap a present that's called Jesus. And as we unwrap that present, we'll find out more about what this gift is all about about who he is and what he's come for and, and why is he laying in a manger and things like that, all as we unwrap this present. So we're going to be talking about presents. We're going to talk about unwrapping here uh, tonight as well, and you guys are going to help us do all of that. So right now, I'd like all of you kids uh, to come forward uh, for our first thing. So let's get the fifth and sixth grade back here. First grade, come on up over this way as well, okay? Stand right here. There you go. Okay. Okay. All right. Just a little closer. There you go. Amy, over here. Come on this other side. I think I look right there. Well, that's okay. Right there. Okay, James, you can go up here and turn around. There you go. Okay. And we will start with the sixth grade recitations. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Okay, people move back. Okay, you guys, we're gonna do that poem now, okay? Preschool? Amy, angels, Yoo-hoo. look at me. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Baby. Um, the Virgin Mary by Baby Boy. 
is this baby? Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Let's see the angels as they tell us. An angel came to Mary when she lived in a town called Nazareth. She was going to be married to a man named Joseph. The angel's name was Gabriel. He told Mary not to be afraid, for the Lord was with her. God would favor her with his love. She was going to have a baby, a son. He would look like any other baby. He would look like any other baby boy. <laughs> but he won't be just any other baby. He would be the son of God and a king following his great ancestor David. He would be king over the people of God forever and ever. His kingdom will never end. Mary wondered how this could be. She was just a poor, simple girl. How could God's king be born of her? Gabriel told her that the Holy Spirit would come upon her. By the power of God himself, she would give birth to God's son. God was doing a miracle through Mary for nothing is impossible with God. Mary would believe the angel. She would have a son and name him Jesus. He would be God's promised king. This baby wrapped in swaddling clothes is a real baby boy, but is also God's king who has come to save us. Very good. Okay, now you guys can go back to your seats. Okay, let's talk a little bit about swaddling clothes. May I have the baby, please? <clears throat> what are swaddling clothes? clothes? Well, swaddling clothes are just strips of cloth, strips of cloth that were very specifically wrapped around the baby very, very tightly. So there would have been strips of cloth that looked just like this. Take a strip and put it around the baby, wrap them very, very tightly. And the reason to wrap the baby tightly, the thought was that that's kind of like what it was in the womb. You know, when the baby was in the womb, it was a very tight place, and the baby was all scrunched up, and then when you come out into the world, your arms are free and your legs are kicking, and that's kind of a scary thought all of a sudden. So here the idea was, let's just wrap the baby, let's just wrap the baby in some strips real tightly, and then they'll feel secure. It'll also, of course, keep the baby warm. When the baby was in the womb of the mother, the temperature was 98 degrees. But then you come out into a stable where the manger is, and that's kind of cold, okay? So wrapping it in strips of cloth like this were, of course, designed to keep the baby as well. But we're doing something else here today. Uh, we're unwrapping this baby to find out more about this gift. What is this gift all about? So you can already see I've got some stuff written on some of the strips here. And we're going to take these off one by one. And we're going to find out more about who this baby is, what he has come to do for us. And we're taking our cue from the angels. From the angels, okay? The angels, like you first graders just talked about, first came to a young lady by the name of Mary. And they went and talked to Mary, this angel did, about this baby that she was going to have. So what did that angel actually say about the baby? Well, let's take off the first strip here. Would you like to take off the first strip? All right, here. Unwrap the swaddling clothes a little bit, and let's end up seeing what this is all about. I need the, Mary, got to hold your baby for a little bit. I only have two arms, okay? All right, Haley, I want you to stand up. I want you to hold this up, stand up, hold it so that the congregation can see it. And kids, what does it say on there? Read it out loud, together. Well, that seems obvious, doesn't it? That it's Mary's son. But what does that all mean? It means this is a real baby. This is a real, real baby, okay? Just like anyone else would be born, so also this is a real baby. 
In fact, when Jesus first came to life, if you want to call it that, was when he was just the size of a pinprick. That's all the bigger he was inside of his mother's womb. That's how big you were. That's how big you were when you started your life. Jesus starts your life, his life, exactly the same way. And of course, then he grows and everything else happens. And then lo and behold, what does this baby all have? He's got exactly the same thing that Haley has. He's got eyes and a mouth and a nose. Inside, he's got lungs and a heart and a, and a gallbladder. Okay? You know, he's got fingers and toes. And, and I'm sure when Mary and Joseph looked at that baby, they marveled and said, whoa, look at this. And they probably counted his fingers and counted his toes. He was a real human being. We, we celebrate that. God came into this world to, and was like us. And was like us. That's how much he loves us. What an incredible gift. Okay, very good. You may be seated. We got one more thing, though. There's another thing that the, that the angels talked about to Mary. Another thing we have to unwrap a little bit. I need the baby back. I need the baby back. And I need someone else. Peyton, come here. All right, Peyton, I want you to unwrap the next piece of swaddling clothes. And let's find out what this one's all about. Okay? And I want you to do just like Haley. Go stand over there and hold it up. And mom, you get to have the baby back again. Take care of that baby. All right, all right, hold it up. And we're going to have everyone read this one too. Kids, I want you to read this one, okay? Read that one. He's a king. A king? He's a king. Oh, my. This isn't just an ordinary baby, is it? It's an ordinary baby. He looks just like you and me, and he's got the fingers and the toes and everything else like that. But he's a king. That's what the angel said. He's going to be a king and will rule on the throne of David. Now, in order to understand that one, you got to know that in Israel, David was the king. He was the very top of the top. He was the best king, and all the other kings that followed after him came from David's family. So David had a son, he was the king. David had a grandson, he was the king. David had a great-great-grandson, he was the king. And it went on and on and on. But then you know what happened? All of a sudden it stopped, and there was no king. There was no king at all. The Israel as a country was defeated by enemy nations, and the enemy nations said, no kings for you. Oh, and the people were sad, and they were waiting for the king to come back. They were waiting for hundreds of years for this king to come back. And now, what did the angel say? The angel came to Mary, and the angel said, here he comes. The king is coming. The one who's going to be king like his great, 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 whatever it was, Grandpa David. He was going to be a king. Wow. David had a direct line all the way to Jesus. And Jesus was not going to be a king just like David. David had territory and he had an army and stuff like that. Oh, Jesus' kingdom was going to be greater than that. His kingdom was going to be over the entire world. Over the entire world. And everyone who believes in him would be part of that kingdom. Wow, this baby is something else. We're looking at a baby laying in a manger. He's a real human being, but we should see him also as our king. Okay, very good, Peyton. Thank you. All right, now we've got to move on because there's other things yet that we want to learn. We've got a couple of things, which means I, first of all, need all the kids to come back up for another song. So first and second grade, let group. Here, Amy. <laughs> Mary's boy child. From this point on, you are going to be joining in the songs that the kids sing. Not the whole thing, but as we get toward the end. You are going to join in the last two songs. You've got to be looking at the screen a little bit, and it will say on there, congregation joins, and then you sing in, and you'll get the melody real easily. It's a real, really nice song. Mary's boy child.
can go back except second, third, and fourth. You stay up there. There we go. What else do the angels tell us about the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes? One of them came also to Joseph to tell him what was happening. He lived in Nazareth and was preparing for his wedding to Mary. When Joseph found out that his dear Mary was going to have a baby, he was distressed. He thought she had been unfaithful, and so he was going to end their relationship. He was very sad. But then the angel came to him in a dream and told him not to worry about taking Mary as his wife. She was going to have a baby, yes, but the baby was God's son, given to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mary had not been unfaithful. She was God's servant to be mother of God's son. She and Joseph would name the baby Jesus. The name Jesus has a very special meaning. It means he saves or savior. God's son and Mary's son was coming into the world to save his people from their sins. Joseph was glad to hear his, this good news. He could still take Mary as his wife. The two of them would raise the baby Jesus in their own home. How they would be blessed, and so would all the people of the world. A long time ago, through the prophet Isaiah, God had promised that his own son would come into the world. Now it was happening. Isaiah had said, A virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. This baby wrapped in swaddling clothes is God himself. Emmanuel, God has come to be with his people. This baby wrapped in swaddling clothes is our Savior the one who takes away our sins and makes us his people. Okay, it's time to unwrap some more about who this baby is 
who this baby is. Would anyone want to over here unwrap the baby? All right, come on up. You can stand up here just like the others. And I'm going to have you unwrap this next strip of swaddling clothes. Okay. There we go. Now, can you hold it up so the congregation can see it? Okay. There we go. Sh show it over this way a little bit so they can read that. Can you, can you guys see that? Okay, what does it say? He is our son. Oh, so Mary's baby, Mary's son, is also God's son. Okay, so he's a regular baby. He's got all the body parts that you and I have. But he's got a different father, doesn't he? He's got God as his father. See, the angel came to Mary to tell her about having a baby and that he was going to be a king. But the angel also came to Joseph. Joseph and Mary were engaged to be married, but they weren't quite married yet. They weren't living together, all right? But then um, Mary got pregnant. She was going to have a baby, and Joseph wondered what's going on. And then an angel came to Joseph and told him something important, something that we'd unwrap, that this is a special baby. This is God's son. He is coming, which is really amazing. Amazing to think about this. God himself becomes like us. That's how much he cares for us, that he's coming to be with us and to love us. That's what that word Emmanuel means. EJ read that. Emmanuel means God with us us. God with us. When you look at the manger and you see that baby laying there, oh yeah, we can count his fingers and count his toes, but we got to do something more, don't we? We got to think, wow, this is the creator of the universe, and he came to be with us. All right, very good. So let's take that one down. You can return to your seat. We'll do another one here. We'll do another one. Keegan, come on up. Okay. All right, Keegan, you can stand right up there, if you would, so everyone can see. Unwrap the next strip of swaddling clothes here. Okay, there, okay, we'll see. You can hold that one up. There we go. Yep. There you go. Okay, hold it up. Okay, what does that one say? He is the Savior. He's the Savior. Whoa, we're getting into some heavy stuff here. See, what did the angel tell Joseph? You guys just read it. What did the angel tell Joseph? The angel told Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary home. She's not been unfaithful to you. She's having a baby, yes, but it's God's baby. It's God's baby. And then they said, the angel said, give him a special name. What name were they supposed to give this baby? Jesus. Jesus. Now the question is, what does the name Jesus mean? What does the name Jesus mean? Who knows? Hint, it's right in front of you. Savior! It means he saves. It means the Lord saves. Oh, look what's happening here. God is coming into this world, and he's coming as a little baby, and what's he going to do? He's going to save us. Save us from what? Save us from a cold winter? Save us from having to eat liver? <laughs> save us from our sins. Save us from the devil. You're right. Save us from death. <gasps> These horrible, horrible things. Sin. Oh, so bad. So bad. And we all do it. The devil, the enemy of God, who would love nothing more than to turn us away from him, and death. The greatest enemy, it hits everyone. And yet, he's coming to do what? To save us. To save us from all of that. That's what the name Jesus means. So just think about that. He's laying in this manger, and we know it's Jesus. As soon as you say the word Jesus, you should be thinking, the Savior. There he is. This is quite a present, isn't it? Good thing we're unwrapping it. We're seeing a whole lot more than just a baby laying in a manger. This is God who's come to save us. Okay, very good. Thank you, Keegan. All right. We have a little bit more, just one more section. But in the meantime, you've got to come up and sing again. Okay? So everyone come back up like we were already. Okay, you can 
step a little bit farther forward. Okay, James, I'm going to get up here. There we go. Okay. The song we're going to sing this time is God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Okay, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. And you're going to join in on verse 3. except fifth and sixth grade can go back to your seats. Shepherds are getting a little too used to the canes. The night that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, an angel appeared to a group of shepherds. He came not only to announce that Jesus had been born, but also to share with the shepherds the great meaning of his birth. The shepherds were near the little town of Bethlehem, out in the field keeping watch over their flocks at night. Suddenly, the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were very afraid. The angel calmed them and told them not to be afraid. He had not come to harm them. He had come to bring good news of great joy. And not only for them, but for all the people of the world. A baby had been born that day in the city of Bethlehem. He told them Bethlehem was a place in which King of David had been born. The angel said that uh, this descendant of David was the Savior. He was Christ the Lord. The angel called Jesus, the Christ, and meant he was the anointed one, filled with the Holy Spirit to accomplish his task of saving people from their sin and defeating death and the devil. The angel called Jesus the Lord. It meant he was the master, the ruler. He was the one who would rule over all the universe for the good of his people. He was also the one before whom everyone would bow in praise. Indeed, at the very moment, the sky above the angel was filled with angels singing praise to God and his son Jesus. Glory to God in the highest, they sang, and on earth peace God will to meet men. The shepherds and all the people had been waiting for many, many generations for God to come and save his people. And now he was here. God's gift to the world was here. and He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Okay, you guys can go back. Okay, just two more strips here for us to look at today. Because again, the angels came. The angels came to Mary, the angels came to Joseph, the angels came also to the shepherds. To the shepherds to unwrap, to tell a little bit more. Are you holding your hand up because you want to come up and unwrap? All right, come on up. (laughs) Let's see what the angels told the shepherds about this baby. 
There we go. All right. There we go. Okay. Here you go. There we go. You got this figured out. <laughs> Your arms aren't quite long enough here. <laughs> what does it say? He is the Christ. He is the Christ. Christ? What is that all about? Okay, that's a, that's a little bit of a complicated word, but it's really, really significant. It's not just a name. Okay, it's not like Jesus Christ. Jesus' first name is Christ is his last name. That's not how it works. This is, this is a title. And what it means is that this Jesus would be filled with the Holy Spirit... The Holy Spirit would bless his human nature, his, his, like he's got arms and legs and everything else like that, so that he could be the Savior. So that he could be the Savior. So he could really do this. It's going to be hard. This is not easy. When we talk about Jesus being the Savior, it means he's going to have to do what? He's going to have to die on a cross. This baby that's laying in the manger is going to grow up very specifically to hang on a cross. That's why he's come. That's what it means that he's a savior. If we don't have a cross, there's no reason to celebrate his birth. So he's got to have help. His human nature comes and is equipped by the Holy Spirit and that makes him the Christ. That's what it means, the anointed one. Anointed with the Holy Spirit so that Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit is able to do what's necessary for you so that your sins can be taken away so that the devil can't harm you at all and so that even death is not going to be the end of anything he's the Christ he's the anointed one coming to do all of this for you what a gift you're getting unwrap the swaddling clothes around the baby and see what it's all about this is everything. This is about life. Okay, very good. <laughs> Hard work. We got one more strip. We got one more strip. Do you want to? Okay, come on up. Your arms are kind of short. We might have to have two of you. Amy, you come up. Let's have the two angels. Oh, good idea. Okay, you two angels, come on up here. <laughs> All right, because this is the message that you angels said. <laughs> It's the, it's the message that you angels told the shepherds, okay? So here, can you kind of unwrap this a little bit here? There we go, there we go. Okay, let's get this one. All right, all right, there we go. And now we're going to have Amy hold this end. Amy, you hold that end. And you hold this end right over here. Okay, Right here at the end. Okay, now step apart a little bit and hold it out there. <gasps> there you go. There you go. This is what the angel said. What did the angel say? He is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. Here, this is the Lord. You know what Lord means? He's over everything. He's over everything. He's the master. He's the one who actually defeats death. He defeats the devil, like you said before. He defeats uh, the, our sins. He makes us the children of God. He's the one who does it all because we can't do it ourselves. We can't do it ourselves. So this is a really needed gift. If we could save ourselves, would we need this, Jesus? But we can't save ourselves. We'd be forever lost. So here comes the Lord, the one with power, the one with might, the one with strength in a little baby. In a little baby. He is Christ the Lord. And that's good news for us. What a gift. What a gift you're getting. When you see that baby wrapped in the manger, unwrap it. Unwrap it. Think, who is he? What has he come to do? Because he's come to love you so very, very much. Okay. Okay, let me have that. And you guys can just stay right here because you're going to come back up in just one second. We're not going to take off the rest of the swaddling clothes because then baby Jesus would be naked. And we're not going to go that far. 
okay? But we've now unwrapped the swaddling clothes, and we're here to celebrate. And what a great way to celebrate by singing the song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, because the angels told us it's great good news. So come on up, guys, and let's sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Yeah, you don't need it for this one, okay? Congregation, you are going to join in on verses 2 and 3 this time. And you sing it very joyously. give the kids a hand for a very nice job here tonight. Very, very good. We appreciate that a lot. Uh, we also want to thank the staff uh, for the work that they do as well. They spend a lot of hours uh, with the kids and, and we appreciate that too. So let's give the staff a hand uh, as well. Now, to wrap it all up, to wrap it all up, this is the poem that the kids said at the very beginning of the service. All of us together are going to say this now. Baby Jesus, born today, came to take our sins away. Mary's son and God's own king, he's our savior, now we sing. Angels call him Christ and Lord, he's the one by all adored. Absolutely. You guys go back to your seats, and then we've got something special. We're talking about gifts, and of course Christmas is a time for gifts. The greatest gift, of course, is the gift of Jesus. And as we unwrap him, unwrap him from the swaddling clothes, we learn a lot about the significance of this great gift. 
We want to give all of you a gift here tonight as well. When I say all of you, all the kids are going to get a gift right now. Uh, and then congregation, we've got something for you as well. We don't have something for every individual, but we do have something for every family, okay? So if you're here alone, you get a gift. If you're here with two people, you get a gift. Here with six people, you get a gift, okay? It's one per family. Uh, so right at the moment, I'm going to... Um, <clears throat> this is for the side. All the kids over here. Don't pass it out yet, uh, but that's for all of you. Uh, this is for all the kids on this side. Okay, one each. Kids, when you get it, don't unwrap it yet. We're going to do that together in just a second. So you just have to hold it because Pastor Steve and I have to go through the congregation uh, real quickly and give out these other gifts uh, for them as well, okay? And while we're doing that, Connie's going to play some Christmas music or something, okay? All of the presence has something to do with Jesus, and that was intentional. We want you to be thinking when you are opening your presence this Christmas, and you're getting socks, when you're getting shirts, when you're getting an iPad or whatever, please, please, please take a moment to think about the greatest gift that comes at Christmas. The greatest gift is Christ. And we can do, we should be able to do, without all the other physical stuff, and still have a marvelous Christmas 
when we think about that gift of Jesus. When someone asks you, what did you get for Christmas? I would really like it, and I don't mean I personally, but I think the Lord would really be honored if the first thing that you would answer would be, I got the gift of a Savior named Jesus. Wouldn't that be impressive? Instead of telling someone about a shirt that you got, instead of telling someone about a toy that you got, tell them, I got the gift of a Savior, Jesus. That's what these gifts were supposed to help us to do, to remember exactly what this holiday is about. And it truly is not something that's bought in a store. It's a gift that has come from heaven wrapped in swaddling clothes. We are going to continue our worship time now when if you would like, you can give a gift to the Lord uh, through the offering. We have a lot of guests here tonight. You are not in any way obligated and you shouldn't feel that you are to give any kind of offering. This is a privilege of us as members of our congregation. Uh, so if you want to just let the offering plate pass by, feel free to do so. Uh, this is about a gift to you and we're glad to be able to present it to you this evening. So the offering will now be received. When we distributed the gifts before, the younger kids got an arch book, which was a Christmas book. Uh, the older kids got an activity book, which is all about Christmas, as well as an ornament. And of course, you got a devotional type book as well. During the offering, we also gave the kids some treat bags uh, so that they have some uh, sweets and stuff like that as well, uh, which is kind of traditional. We have some extra bags. So if any of the other kids in the congregation tonight who did not participate in the service would like a bag, uh, they'll be in the back. Paul Eikhoff will have those uh, for you. We're going to conclude our service tonight with our prayers. Uh, the only special prayer that I want to mention tonight is that we'll pray for Florence Reinhardt. Uh, Florence is in the hospital right at the moment. Uh, she had fallen uh, and didn't break anything or so on, but she has gone in for tests and observation. Uh, so hopefully within a few days, she'll be able to be released from the hospital. Uh, she did kindly ask that no one really call her. Uh, it's, she's in a little bit of distress with her neck and things like that, so it's hard for her to talk on the phone. Uh, if a couple of you, I suppose, wanted to go up and visit her, that would be fine. But you know Florence. Uh, she liked to visit other people, but she never wants anyone to visit her, okay? Uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, but Pastor Steve talked her into letting us pray for her tonight. Uh, so we have her permission uh, to, uh, to do just that. Would you please stand for a word of prayer? Dearest Jesus, you are Mary's son. 
You're God's king. You're God's son. You're the savior. You're the Christ. You're the Lord. What a gift. What a gift that has come to us wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. We thank you, dear God, that you indeed have sent your son to love us and to care for us and to make us your own. Help us to truly celebrate Christmas in its fullness, in the way that gives honor and glory to you and that echoes the voice of the angels, the angels that brought this good news to us. We pray tonight that you'll bless all these children here tonight. We pray that you'll keep them steadfast in a wonderful Christian faith. Bless their parents, that their parents may truly understand the singular importance of teaching their children your love and your truth by bringing them not only to Sunday school, but to church and to raising them in, in the truth that you have revealed. So may this not only be a, a single celebration out of the year, but truly a, a lifestyle which gives glory and praise to you for your immense love for us. Today we ask for your blessings also then to rest upon Florence uh, as she is hospitalized for tests and observation. Uh, we know that you care for her and pray that you will indeed embrace her with your love and assure her that all of her friends and family care for her as well. We pray for Brad Jansen as he's recuperating now from gallbladder surgery. We're grateful that that went very well and he's doing much, much better. We pray again for Dana, Larry Heimsness' daughter, as she continues to recover from a stroke. Continue to help her make progress every single day. Be with Mike Elke as he continues to recuperate from his broken bones. And be also then with Larry Gilbert as he receives radiation for lung cancer. Hold these children in your arm. Help them to know your presence. And may that give them comfort and joy today and always. We pray all this, dear Jesus, in your name and as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And we'll conclude by saying, go tell it on the mountain.
again, we thank you so much for being here. We do have Christmas services, obviously Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. You're invited to join us for that as well. The kids are going to stay up here in their seats. Parents, you're responsible to come and pick them up, okay? Go in peace. Merry Christmas.